Hello, and welcome back to Popcorn and Beers, where some use tomatoes and others use thumbs. We use the stuff that gets you drunk. So, thank you, Yingling, for sponsoring the show without your consent again. Um, have your people get with our people, unless they're trying to sue us, then I will not give you my address. All right. Uh, <laughs> welcome back, Josh. It's great to have you in. Hi. Hi. It's been a pleasure to be here. I'm really bad at pouring beer. It's all over my leg. <laughs> I'm a bartender, by the way. That's what I do for a living. <clears throat> it's okay. It's okay. The audience will forgive it, I think. I, like I hope. <laughs> I don't know if audiences on podcasts are known for forgiveness. But yes, yes, on a short leash. And in the words of uh, Ryan Reynolds, uh, or no, it's not Ryan Reynolds. It's Anna Ferris. Forgiveness is more than saying sorry. <laughs> same movie though same movie yes, just yes. friends uh i should write that down as one of my drunk classic choices down the road that's the future, a great movie i love that movie love with that movie. my whole heart and if you're a succession fan cousin greg one of his first movies yes. he plays the little brother mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um all right i love it jordan uh why don't we start off with you and what you were watching this week okay so as we know last week i fell into the rabbit hole through guardians of the galaxy of you know watching a marvel series so i watched daredevil season one mm -hmm. uh to you know getting into the whole uh, netflix marvel defenders street hero series and um and when i say that i mean only daredevil and uh punisher i will uh -huh. just be i will just be <laughs> youtube uh recapping every other series in that jessica jones and uh yeah. Season one, Jessica yeah. Jones is worth watching, dude. Season one only. I, I watched <laughs> the whole series in a fifteen minute in a fifteen minute short clip of it on YouTube, and I didn't. It didn't seem like something I would like. It didn't grab you. Um, yeah. Kilgrave was a good villain, though. He Kilgrave was a, was a good villain. I like that guy. Yeah, I like that actor. He's he's uh, he's a creep. He's got a creepy <laughs> face. Um, but so yeah, I got into Daredevil season two, and uh, this season is even more. Not your kids Marvel. Yeah. <laughs> it's more <laughs> more brutal because <laughs> we're introduced to Frank Castle, the Punisher, and he punishes people. <laughs> That's what he does. And we're also introduced to Electra, and there's a mm -hmm. lot of Electra sexy time going on in this yeah. season. So she's pretty too. <laughs> yeah, she's... Both both in, in real present day and flashbacks. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> the Punisher is awesome. That's the whole reason I got into this series. I wasn't sold on the Daredevil series. For some reason, it just didn't pique my interest. Yeah. But you guys talked me into it, and I'm so glad you did. It's fantastic. Um, but I like the Punisher. I don't necessarily like who the Punisher is co-opted by these days in society. She's I'm with kinda, you. Well, they kinda, don't even know what it stands for. Josh and I have had this conversation offline so many times. Like, do you even understand what the Punisher stands for as yeah. you fly that flag? Yeah, yeah, the Punisher himself told those people, you better not let me catch you flying my flag. This yeah. Flag. <laughs> you better not be doing what I'm doing. That's the whole thing. <laughs> yes, we're all on the same page. I'm glad. <laughs> but um, John Barenthal is perfect for this role. There's some guys that are just perfect for some roles, um, su specifically superhero roles. I mean, Benedict as Dr. Strange, Hugh Jackman as um, Wolverine. Wolverine, John Barenthal as the Punisher. I think he- Chris Evans, people. Captain America. I'm surprised. Yes, yes. And yeah. Holland yeah. as Spider-Man was pretty perfect too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Teenage Spider-Man at least. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot going on this season. You know, as I mentioned with the Electra storyline, it kind of felt wedged in there. It, mm -hmm. it could have been. It's it's not terrible, but it, it honestly, it, the the Electra and the the Punisher storylines probably could have been their own seasons. I don't know if they were feeling like they needed to rush to get as much like backstory and get some things going, some real serious yeah. digging into the the world going because 
maybe they were afraid of, you know, Netflix giving them the ax mm -hmm. as Netflix does to good shows. Um, like Mindhunter. Yep. <laughs> That's for you, Travelers. Netflix. Yeah. Uh, I did read if if you want me to comment really quick, I know you're doing yeah, your yeah, research, yeah, I yeah, apologize. No, no, absolutely. I did read that they were trying to rush to the defenders. They were trying to because they were like the Avengers universe had blown up so big that they were trying to ride that wave with the defenders. Mm -hmm. And they ended up just really screwing up their universe in, in yeah. trying to rush it out. They pitched it. Yeah. You mm -hmm. can say it. Um yeah, it's it's not terrible, but her costume, like I said for the first season, where it's just like him with like this mm -hmm. half of his face covered by like a like a panty. <laughs> He's blind. He's blind. <laughs> yeah, hard when he said that. Uh. <laughs> her costume, and she's like this like supermodel. Yeah. looking girl yeah. is just a red scarf tied around her mouth and i'm like you're telling me that nobody knows but if it was just like, like this is her red lipstick <laughs> yeah <laughs> mm, it's my costume <laughs> and she's not even like and it's not even like she's just some like lawyer like she's a famous like she's in this business yeah. world and like, multi-billionaire yeah people know her yeah it's like it's like uh, Elon Musk wearing an N95 and beating people up, and nobody can tell it's him. <laughs> yeah, people know your body shape, dude. <laughs> I think Elon Musk's body shape is bleh. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, there, you know, my only beef is that there is there's just way too much going on and not enough. Just, just, it's just not enough explained throughout yeah, it all i agree um uh, but not enough to, to ding it down a grade i still give it a popcorn and three popcorn awesome. and three dude what? i love uh, daredevil season two um i mm -hmm. really liked well you know we talked about the first season with that fight scene all one shot right we i'm not sure yeah. you mentioned that it was one mm -hmm. continuous in shot. the hallway they did the same thing in season two and they do it again in season three in a different way but this one in season two was so incredible i'm not sure if you noticed like when he's going down the spiral staircase Where's the camera? Like, who, the, it's not a man holding a camera. There's a drone, or I don't know how they're doing it, but um, they make a continuous shot while it's just floating down the staircase. And the, when the beginning of that fight scene, when he's got the gun and he pulls the trigger, and he's like, "Ha!" Ah, it was it was unloaded the whole time. And like, then he starts beating the hell out of you. Like, it's just so stinking <laughs> good. And Punisher is great. I say that um, mm, yeah. he's not the perfect textbook Punisher because Punisher traditionally is more, more like calm, cool and collected. Whereas Barenthal goes like Wolverine mode. But mm. I think that artistic approach was a great addition to the character or a great retelling. So I think he's mm -hmm. the best Punisher for sure. So far. Yeah. Cause I mean, who have been out of their Punishers? The Frank Grillo was in war zone. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. And... Grillo was not great. Um, Thomas Jane was the guy from the one with Tar Charlie Sheen. No, <laughs> Grillo Charlie was Penn. the worst. Grillo was the worst, and then the villain in the Thomas Jane one was terrible because it was John like you said, Travolta. Travolta? Yeah, yeah, um, where he ties him to the car and he's just yeah. slow mo through the exploding vehicles. Yeah. He's like, That's... "You need me. The city needs me." <laughs> that, um, yeah, that that uh, Thomas Jane did a really good Punisher because he did do the calm, cool, and collected mastermind yeah. of combat guy. Kevin Nash's with, like, uh, break in. Kevin Nash's fight scene. Do you hear the, yeah. the fun fact how he really got stabbed and he just kept rolling with it? Yeah. Um, anyway, He's humongous, but, man. That movie was trying to play uh, out the Spider-Man vibe, so it like kept the themes, the the storytelling, the Raimi style shots. So that's mm -hmm. why it suffered. With the really quick, my only note on Daredevil season two is I think it's episode three when he beats the hell when Dare when Punisher beats the hell out of Daredevil and Daredevil returns the favor towards the end of the episode. And he drags him up against the gravestone in yeah. the graveyard. And John Barenthal uh, goes through his monologue about when his kids were killed. And he's like, what is it? One skip, two skip, three skip, four. And uh, he's penny doing the nurse. What, yeah. yeah, penny and dime. And he's doing the nursery yeah. rhyme with his kids. Yeah. I, can, I, will t I will die on this hill. The way he acted out that scene deserved at least a minimum an Emmy nomination. Right. That scene was so, it was so powerful. Yeah. Like the way he acted out that scene. Absolutely. And I, I just couldn't believe he didn't even get an. I, I mean, I can because Netflix wasn't as big back then. Yeah. But damn, he acted his ass off in that yeah. one scene. 
<laughs> and his bloody fight scene in the prison and everything Kingpin did. <laughs> Kingpin with Murdoch yeah. in, in jail where he beats the hell out of him and, like when he's in civilian clothes. It's one of my favorite <laughs> scenes. I go back on YouTube that often to see the way that D'Onofrio pulled that scene off. It was so freaking good. <laughs> yeah, I still have feelings about D'Onofrio. I love D'Onofrio. Obviously, he's my he's the, one of the best characters in my favorite movie of all time. So I got a spot for him. Man but Black. no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Great movie. <laughs> Great movie. <laughs> Get your big butt back in the house. <laughs> I give him a break. Uh, Isn't that incredible how memorable he was for just being some weird alien boy? Like, we all know all of his lines. You're useless, Beatrice. <laughs> all right, sir. What was next? Sorry. Oh, um, yeah. So I watched uh, former Butter on Top, finally, Scream 6. Uh, the Ghost Face Killer. He's awesome. Not the rapper. No, um, shout out to him, though. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's great. Uh, story is as convoluted as ever. Good, campy, cheesy horror fun, though. Yeah. My favorite scene in all of the ridiculousness of the movie, though, um, is at the end. I'm not really spoiling anything. Um, but if I am, so what? This movie's not good. It's just fun to watch <laughs> the killing and all that. Um, the cop. At the end, at the very end, when the, the the older sister, final girl, and the cop are running at each other, and he's got a gun pointed at her. Yeah. That's loaded. And he just runs at her. Ah! And just doesn't <laughs> shoot. Forgets all his training. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what? I, I died. I was like, oh, my God. That, I think movie. that was like my review was like, there were so many opportunities to die or get away in yeah. this movie. <laughs> And more. Uh, I give it a popcorn. Yeah, a popcorn, <laughs> popcorn, uh, uh, popcorn. All right, really quick uh, with mine. I finished Sweet Two season two. Hey, mm. support the writers if you can. They they have a fun setup because Sweet Two season two will show you all the reasons why we don't need uh, scripts sped up and them only getting paid for like three weeks of work and how important it is to have storyboarding and how important it is to have writers on staff because it was trash uh mm. netflix has fallen off a cliff and in, in their pursuit to just expedite content because this was bad you said you season three was bad mm. i think it's called uh something and bones bone something and bones that other shadow show and shadow bones. and bones season two was god awful like I, I it was literally painful to watch it mm. uh netflix this is a plea pay the writers you had such good content you were crushing all the other per you were destroying Hulu. You were destroying the destroying network had to create HBO. Yeah, the networks had to create streaming platforms just to keep up with you. And now yeah. your content has been so bad. Pay the writers, support the writers. Uh we'll find out what what link is available to pay into the writers fund so they can keep striking because AI is just not gonna cut it. If you've seen the AI beer commercial, you know exactly what I'm talking about. AI is yeah, just not funny. going to cut it. It's 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 bad. There's no. I think at one point he's they're holding like a 32 ounce can of beer and they're just pouring it in their <laughs> face. And I'm just like enough, enough yeah, with AI, with enough with <laughs> enough with AI writers, enough with chatbot. Like we need a soul. Stories need a soul. Writers okay. need time to write. We want to see good stories. Uh, <laughs> yeah, different opinion there, but. Okay, move on. I'm, I'm sorry. Vanderpump rules can be your thing. Now, uh, <laughs> pay the writers. That's not, we're not in agreement there. We're just going to use AI pay as a tool writers. and not the alternative. It's a tool that writers can use. Let writers. Yeah, and they should. Well, it, the, what I'm saying is one of the bit main sticking points, I don't know if you guys have been following it, of the writer strike is they're asking for a percentage of any content that's produced by Chatbot GPT. And they're like, nope. Essentially, what they're asking for is three percent of the uh, of the um, uh, profit earned by the studios, wow. and the, the the studios were like, "Nope, no, yeah." <laughs> so we're on the verge. Of bleep the billionaires. And, uh, it's yeah. good to be on the side of the writers. Yeah, bleep the billionaires. 
eat the rich enough of this like i'm tired of uh like this is this is what's gonna kill everything is if you guys don't wake the bleep up and realize like if it's all about profit we lose everything else like there will be 10 people standing yeah. on the hill at the end of life there will be no water there will be no earth and there will be no good content pay the writers <laughs> yeah <laughs> um Outside of that, it was terrible. Sweet Tooth Season 2 was terrible. I'm really intrigued by the story. I'm really intrigued. I like the post-apocalyptic feel to a lot of shows. This one's no different. I can't wait to start Silo on Apple TV. But uh, it was a popcorn for me, Season 2. The other film I watch, I'm going to give this one, uh, as I usually do, I'm going to give this one a popcorn in two. And it's funny. It's called Rye Lane. It's a British art film by uh, Fox Search Searchlight Pictures, which is why I watched it. I saw it was a Searchlight film. Searchlight films are usually artistic. You usually see a lot of Searchlight films nominated for Academy Awards. So I was like, oh, it's probably pretty good. It's a very artsy film right away. But it's done really well. It's a love story. And I'm not going to lie. At first, I was like, I'm going to check out on this, I think. I'm going to bail. And they have a scene. And it's uh, really, it, it opens on the breakup. And I'm kind of like, okay, whatever. Oh, my God. You had your heart broken. Wham, wham, wham. But then you get to meet the girlfriend and the best friend that are a reason for the breakup in a uh, Brazilian steakhouse in a super awkward moment. And to myself, I'm thinking, why would anyone want to do that in the world of G Jim Carrey and Liar Liar? All right. So he meets up with his ex-girlfriend and her new uh, guy for lunch. And her new guy happens to be his best friend. Oh. And... <laughs> He is a dummy. He's totally like nonchalantly talking to him like they're still best friends and just going with it. And, and it takes off from there. And that's when I was bought in. And it's very interesting because it, it's like what gaslighting is if you meet the ex-girlfriend. As she is absolutely trying to invite him there because they all need closure. And I'm like, no, you need closure. <laughs> what are you doing? You needed me to show up to this so you could feel better about what you've done. He's like, he's, uh, like hey, he's like, hey man, how do I work the TV and the stereo at the same time? It's like, why do you work the TV and the stereo at the same time? Because I like to party. <laughs> it is, and it's kind of like that. The guy is kind of like that. Why, why are you calling me? I hate you. <laughs> One of the quotes why? at this lunch is, the, <laughs> the ex-girlfriend goes, it isn't easy for any of us. <laughs> To continue to make him feel bad about what they did. <laughs> she oh. says it right to his face. This isn't easy for any of us. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, he meets a total disruptor. It's a story that uh, predominantly takes place over the course of a day. And it's it's fun. It's almost like date night atmosphere with Steve Carell and Tina Fey. Mm -hmm. I really liked it. You find like his ex-girlfriend is a total socio sociopath, pardon me. And it does a lot of capitalizing on new age technology with cell phones and how people meet. And it really dispar discourages it. Like, why do we keep meeting people on these devices? And wh why is why can't we just develop a genuine relationship in real life where we talk to each other? So I thought that that was a cool point by the uh, by the writers to be like, hey, you know, it's cool to still meet it. people in bars. What's that? By the old man who wrote it. Good point. By the old man. <laughs> I, by I like that. <laughs> like, I like meeting randos in bars and just talking. Like, These stupid serious. computers don't even know nothing about yeah. me. You know, but... And then we probably find out that Chatbot GPD wrote half the film. Uh, <laughs> That being said, like I said, I did give it a popcorn at two. It ended up being a good, fun story, and it is over like that. It's an hour and 25 minutes. That's good. I like that when it uh, flashes yeah. like that, yeah. Yeah. All right, Josh, what were you watching this week? Oh, me? Sorry I missed last week, but this week, uh, just briefly, <laughs> I started season two of Attack on Titan. It's an anime. It's from Japan. It was like the hot new thing probably five years ago. I'm not sure how big it is anymore, but most anime fans regard it as one of the better ones. I've seen season one. It's good. And this is really just kind of a kickoff, just briefly saying uh, Attack on Titan's awesome. Cool animation, mm -hmm. great storyline, constantly twists, like the lore twists all the time. And it's really interesting. Episode by episode, you're like, what? You know? Um, but this has uh, got me thinking I should probably watch more anime. It's been a long time since I've been into anime, and anime movies are really good sometimes. So uh, in the audience, you got some suggestions, uh, throw, throw them out. Anyway, Attack on Titan so far, I'm giving it a popcorn too. Mm -hmm. um, I also watched uh, Shang-Chi. Um, Fry would call it Shang-Chi. 
Um, right, what's up with that Shang Chi? Give me some Shang Chi. Doing karate. Peanuts, bald peanuts. Isn't that what, Isn't that the beer you're drinking? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Shang Chi. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just rewatched Shang Chi because I've been wanting to, and I just forgot. This is one of the best Marvel films, standalone. You know, it doesn't really feed into the lore. It's by itself origin story of a character most people don't really know much about. I didn't know much about him except for he's a kung fu guy. Um, Aquafina, once again, boom. This is maybe her best uh, on screen, I think. Uh, she was she was fun. I liked the fact that she was she wasn't the romantic lead, but she was the female lead, and they were just best mm -hmm. friends, and they didn't insert some bullshit into it. They were just like, "Hey, we're best friends, and I love you forever." Awesome. Moving on. Yeah. Um, the bus fight scene may be the best fight scene ever in MCU. <laughs> like a lot of people point to um, Winter Soldier versus Captain America, their first fight in in a Winter Soldier movie. That's noted mm -hmm. as one of the better fight scenes. I think this that bus fight scene was absolutely incredible. It's good. Absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. Not the most super cool, intriguing plot, but very well done. Um, there's a lot of flash and flare. They did some tie-ins, abominations there, Wongers is there. Fight scene camera work. A lot of times, remember in the like the two thousands, you had a lot of shaky camera, so you couldn't really see what was happening, and they used that as a tool to hide that they can't really fight. Well, this was really mm -hmm. well done and focused really hard. The choreography and the camera work together. Shang Chi was just a great kung fu movie with pretty decent CG. Cool story. I can't wait to see him in the next project wherever he's at. There's a guy with a sword hand. The sword's way too long for it to be retractable. Doesn't make any sense. Who cares? <laughs> I think I voted for uh, Shang Chi for best editing at our Oscar party that we had. I thought that it that was, was going to get uh, uh, yeah, best really. cinematography and best editing. I, I thought the effects in that were amazing. I really think, great uh, effects, I, and like you said, like great yeah. pacing. The editing, like how they go mm -hmm. scene to scene, is really well done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think uh, a lot of that stuff was the same team as Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh, cool. Well, that's cool. Forward. Yeah. The choreography told a story in a way that you don't see a whole lot. The first date with the bad guy and his wife, like, was a, that was a first date, but it was a fight scene. You know what I mean? They yeah. fell in love while they're fighting, and that's so, so cool. Not a word was spoken. Anyway, I give, <laughs> uh, give Shang-Chi a popcorn and two. What did you oh, give Attack day. on Titan? I think we sidetracked you. Oh, I call that a popcorn and two overall. Uh, I've seen the first season okay. and I love it to death. And so far, second season's not disappointing. It's right on track to keep going. There's four seasons on Hulu, so I'll update you later. Um, yeah, that's it. That's, but also, um, I wanted to catch up with you guys since I missed last week and I watched a Boogie Nights. <laughs> I had not seen it previously. And it was quite a ride. It was It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Quite a ride indeed. First of all, one, two, three. There were four superhero and or villains in this movie. Can you name them? Yeah. Al Alfred Molina was Dr. Octopus. Thomas Jane Ooh. was the Punisher. Yeah. Don Cheadle was War Machine. Uh, William H. Macy uh, was the Shoveler in Mystery Men. Ooh. Yes, yes. Mystery and Man. I don't know if you count John C. <laughs> Riley as uh, Wreck-It Ralph. He's kind of a superhero. Sure. So no, he's cool. a superhero, bro. No, no, he is a superhero. He's in. Uh, he's for Xandar. He's the leader of the Xandarian uh, army. Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, oh that's yeah. right. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, gee, I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Yeah. Right on. I actually, what as I noticed this, I kind of like, I was like, why hasn't Burt Reynolds ever played a superhero? And then why hasn't? Why hasn't Marky Mark ever been in a superhero movie? He just, like, missed that window somehow. I don't get it. Yeah. What I like about this movie, and I don't like, do like, don't like, is the main character isn't Mark Wahlberg. It's, like, the scene. The house. The main house and the scene was the main character. If you notice, like, Mark Wahlberg's barely part of the movie. Really? He's the centerpiece, but, like, <laughs> they tell entire plots without him, and he's not involved. And, like, if he dropped out halfway through the movie, it would still be a movie. So the scene is what it's about. I looked up briefly. They're talking about that. I guess P.T. Anderson was the writer. Is that right? And director, of course. Yeah. Um, he said that he just knew that scene. So he just told the story of that. And that's that really came out in the movie. But at the same time, what happened? 
Like, what was the plot? Were there any lessons learned? Were there any, like, character arcs that, like, came to a justified mm -hmm. ending? Or was it just like, okay, we partied for a while, and now let's swim in the pool? That's what the movie's about. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I really like the scene where uh, Mark Wahlberg is all zooted out, and he's, like, he gets fired. You know, he causes a scene. The first thing I said yeah. when he started up, I said, I'm a peacock! You gotta let me fly! <laughs> 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 I love that, John. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Don Cheadle was good. It was just he was an interesting character. Uh, John C. Riley. I feel like this movie was really his audition for Step Brothers. Like, what do you bench? I've been great. You know, you know what yeah, I mean. Like, yeah. The whole the whole dynamic between him and Mark Wahlberg yeah. was very Step Brothersy in a way. No, you lastly, go first. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, lastly, uh, overall, I like the movie. But they could have cut a whole hour from the movie. An entire yeah. hour. You said a half hour last time. Easily one hour sorry. could be chopped off. However, this is a movie about taking a ride of the scene. It's a lot like Goodfellas. Like, it was showing you the mob. It was showing you what was happening mm -hmm. at that time. Casino, same thing. This is not a, a gangster movie, but it's, a you know, the dark, gritty, under, underworld type of thing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think it's halfway justified, at least. I give this movie a popcorn and a beer. I might suggest it to a 20 something. You know what I mean? In, in my review, I said it was a really, really long don't do drugs infomercial. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> bad things happen if you do drugs because his career is amazing. He's buying big houses. He's got his oh, yeah. kung fu bedroom, yeah, yeah, Asian yeah, yeah. style, until he starts doing cocaine. <laughs> and then once right. he said it's all downhill. I, yeah. thought, I forgot about that. I wanted to mention how interesting it, like two or three years go by when he's in the porn industry at the top of his career <laughs> and then and then he does cocaine that fool yeah. did cocaine at the third party guaranteed <laughs> like they can get to that part up that dude yeah. he got zooted right away he was 17 years old he was making a lot of money having a lot of sex and guess what's gonna happen what yeah. what did you think of the end the pep talk i was wondering if we were gonna see it yeah. and that thing was no. like a Burnt sausage. What's going on? Um, yeah. You, you kind of just go, okay, there it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I do, I do like that. Honestly, from a writer standpoint or whatever, artistic, like the mm -hmm. pep talks was one of the only constants in the movie. And watching yeah. that, it was almost Shakespearean progression of the downfall of him. And I think it's to his credit, he did a good job acting actually, and he was a very believable character even when he was ridiculous. And that goes for most of the characters. Luis Guzman. Yeah, Ooh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, too. Who? Yeah. Guzman. What'd you say? Oh. <laughs> oh, Luis yeah. Guzman, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was incredible. And, yeah, William H. Seymour Macy? Hoffman, they could have completely left him out, but he was a great character, so why bother leaving him out? He was great. <laughs> I, loved, I loved the fat guy in the tight, tight denim shorts and the tank tops. And the, like, you could clearly tell he's gay from the moment you meet him in the movie. Like, you're like, oh, that guy's, oh, he's very the, clearly. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> like he's silly. Um, like, how did they? How did they manage that? How did he manage? And that? Uh, good job. And I did. I so I like your thoughts on the uh, the drug portion. And then what about the William H Macy just offing himself, his wife, and the guy eventually? Oh, yeah, dude, Fantastic. I forgot to mention that too. That was a really great uh, cinematic <laughs> scene that didn't need to happen at all, but we put it in the movie because <laughs> I want to do a one shot. That whole scene was one shot. Did you notice that? Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm a sucker. Out to for the a car. Dude. Sucker Back in. <laughs> Love a one shot so much. And the way it ended. Oh, man. Perfect. I mean, <laughs> and then Jordan's, a tragedy, but. Jordan's notes on the. He's, what was it? Is you had written down your notes how he said it. It's the second girl in two nights, oh, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or it's the second time this has second happened in two nights. Yeah. I mean, maybe second I need to rewatch it. Because it's one of those movies that, like, the second time you realize it's funny. You know what I mean? <laughs> there was obviously like, funny ever... parts, but I think the second time around, I'll start laughing at it. Maybe. It's like, you yeah. ever think about getting some different stuff? <laughs> <laughs> the, rich, oh, the rich millionaire that gives no Fs. No. And he, it's like, he doesn't care. He's just throwing out money in his house to people. So... That drunk classic leads us into your drunk classic, which was Black Dynamite. I apologize to the audience. I got it wrong. So why don't you lead us off on Black Dynamite? Dynamite! Dynamite! 
Oh, man. Uh, I, I've actually had this one on my list uh, since the early days of popcorn and beer all those years ago. Um, I really, really love Black Dynamite. I saw it maybe 2011, so not opening or anything. I just think it's incredible. It's it's a, a great spoof film. And if you are aware of the black exploitation era, this is just a, a love letter to it. And it's a love letter to cheap filming in general. The way Dolomite did it for real, they really did cheap film, but this movie purposely made it better. Like, mm -hmm. there was the scene where the guy doesn't really know how to read a script, and he's like, sarcastically, I'm in charge. And he's like, uh, yeah, when I get back home, I'm going to go see my baby. Shows picture. And then he actually shows the picture. You know, and he reads all the lines of the script. And they do the stuff where you, you, the boom mic comes down. Or um, yeah. I, don't know if you, I don't know if you remember when Bullhorn slaps the guy and the guy gets mad, so they change the actor. Um, uh, there's all kinds of things like that. They do the car blowing up scene footage twice. They reuse the film. Yes. Yeah. So... <laughs> this this whole thing is Michael Jai White. Uh, he came up with the idea, took it to someone, they got it funded, and he helped write it as well. It's just a beautiful homage to action, kung fu, love story, black exploitation, seventies, all that. It's just a wonderful line for line comedy. You're laughing the whole time, and you can watch it mm -hmm. again and again and see new stuff. I threw that shit before I walked in the room. Um, I love, uh, Michael Jai White has those close-ups where he just does it for too long, like, he just, like, a really intense face. Yeah. You don't have to now! <laughs> Do you want to live like this? Do you want to live like this? <laughs> <laughs> oh, and that scene, uh, this, you can just really, this is, like, a lot like a Super Troopers or something where you could really just go shot for shot and laugh about. It's a great movie. I could watch it again and again. Yeah. Popcorn and Three. Black Dynamite. But I want to mention real quick, I picked this movie this week because the trailer for Outlaw Johnny Black is coming uh, <laughs> to theaters very soon. And it's the exact same crew, a lot of the same actors, and they're making a Western mm. in the in the exact same vein. And it even, like, the trailer starts with Bullhorn, the guy who played Bullhorn. I want to tell you a story about <laughs> the Outlaw Johnny Black. And uh, it's the same type of movie, but it's a Western. So I can't wait to see it in theaters this year. A lot of the actors took off, too, from this film. Yeah. Like, Creamed Corn is, like, I've yeah. seen. Yeah. Creamed, Creamed Corn, Corn is in a bunch of stuff. Uh, Tommy Davidson. Tommy Davidson. That's, Tom, that's Tommy Davidson. Yeah. A yeah, lot so of these there's, people were a... little big in the 90s, too, yeah. Yeah. Well, is, isn't he in uh, Booty Call, too? Yeah. Yep. Is he the Velociraptor? <laughs> Yeah, uh, only on Mad yeah. TV or in Living Color. He was in Living Color, right? Yeah, he's uh, he's an Ace Ventura when nature calls. He's the little guy in the backpack. Yes, oh, yes, yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anaconda malt liquor is the perfect name of a malt liquor that shrinks your penis. <laughs> Sponsored by the federal government. And uh, what is the Greek god of war? <laughs> Who else goes? <laughs> and then in Roman, <laughs> Zeus slayed the serpent at Delphi. And then what do the Romans and the Greeks have in common? <laughs> Turn it around, spell it backwards, drop the S. <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm getting away. Uh, right. To uh, yeah, so so t uh, I give it a pop and two. I thought it was funny. It's quick too. It's boom boom. Yeah, uh, right to the point. Uh, <laughs> don't ever call me mom while I'm doing my kung fu. <laughs> yeah, I did interrupt my kung fu. <laughs> and I put it straight to you, turkeys. <laughs> I put two kung fu classics in a row with respect to Mark Wahlberg and how he knows kung fu. Mm -hmm. Remember when he's trying to get his uh, records, his his, yeah. his master copies, and yeah. he's like, tell this dude, tell this guy I know kung fu, I can take him out. <laughs> um that one and not the orphans. Yeah. Oh, I used to be an orphan. And he starts shaking the kid. Oh my god, a lot of kids by that name. Uh, try to show a little girl. That, you just took the third one. You just took sorry. my third one. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. That was my third one. My mama told me Black Dynamite was my daddy's name. Yeah, it was a popular name. Oh man. <laughs> that was my third one. Yeah, it was, it was a popular name. <laughs> All right, George, what, did, what did you give it uh man this movie just looks like it was a blast to make like oh, a yeah. bunch of you know acquaintances friends getting together 
just playing around, <laughs> kicking shit, kicking stuff around ideas. It, it you could see it, it came through the screen, you know, just how much fun these guys were having making it. Mm. Like at cut, mm. I could tell like the tension, like to laugh at cut was just like everyone would erupt. Yeah, um, yeah. I you mentioned it, um, it is written in my notes. I love Tommy Davidson, super mm. underrated, maybe not that well known guy. Um, everything he says or does cracks me up and his name being cream corn is hilarious. All the names given to all the guys in the, in the movie are hilarious. It's like a guy named coach. There's a guy named Kotex and like, yeah, Kotex. Just, yeah. But black dynamite. Of, I sell drugs for the community. That's the best ad lib of all time. <laughs> that was not, a, that was not in the script. Uh, there's, there's no way to make nunchucks look cool. I'm sorry. They look like it looks like to get hit with a nunchuck probably hurts like hell, but there's just no way I think to make them just look cool as like a real weapon. Nah, I don't. I don't get. I I've never gotten good nunchucks job when he kicks I think the nunchucks Michael... away and they come back to him like a boomerang for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I need to go back and watch the Ninja Turtles. It's I been mean, so like long since I've then... seen those. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and thank you, Josh, for picking this. This paved the way for more parody films to Good. get on as classics. We don't I've have got, enough comedy in classics, yeah. I've got a couple parody films in mind that, that right. I think could one day make it on as a classic. Um, so as a parody film in that genre, I give it a pop, too. What was our butter on top this week? Remind me and remind the audience. Yeah, so uh, it was a little uh, slow in the theater. Nothing, nothing major jumped out at us. So we went streaming platform. We went with Hulu's new uh, Boston Strangler mm. film, starring uh, everyone's favorite pirate queen, Kira Knightley. Mm-hmm. You know, we all you know you can't sit here and lie and say that you did not fall in love with Kira Knightley as Elizabeth Swan. I fell in love. She has the most beautiful oh. underbite you've ever seen. It was before that for me. She was. What was she in before that? I don't know, but Pride she was and seventeen and... in Pirates, so. No, she wasn't. She absolutely no wasn't. Way. Pirates 1, she was 17. Yep. No, she was not. Well, look it up. She was 17 in Pirates. <laughs> well, I was a teenager too, so I don't feel guilty, yeah. so shut up. No, of course not. I'm just saying, like, I don't know how many movies she had before that, is all I'm saying. I'm not Did sure. Domino? Really. But was she in Domino before Pirates of the Caribbean? Domino. I don't think it was. Well, before. I was like 10, and we were in love, so she's the creepy one, not me. <laughs> yeah, she's creepy, not me. I'm not weird. She's weird. <laughs> No, I love her. <laughs> so yeah, the the Boston Strangler z, question mark Boston z, Stranglers z. because we uh you kind of get the you know it's it, this is a it's a true story so no spoiler here that you you don't yeah. definitively get you know they don't know for sure who committed mm-hmm. every single one of these crimes. Um, there's a, there you know the movie's good. There's some light tension for a serial killer movie which is you know a mystery mm-hmm. kind of it's it the tension is light um awesome twist keeps you guessing throughout the movie uh my other note is of course it's that guy playing yep. the boston strangler that poor yeah. creepy yeah. face guy every that time rich guy every is what you meant to say yeah right yeah <laughs> Hey, you take your attributes and uh, you make them you work play, for you. You play the character. You'll he's also in Suicide Squad too, right? Yeah, Suicide Squad yeah. too. Yeah, he plays the, the dog man, and he's yeah. the guy yeah. that Joker <laughs> messes with in Batman Two when he's like the creepy guy. Yeah, no, Scarecrow yeah. messes with him. Joker. I don't know. He's also in Ant Man. He's one of the security guys. Oh yeah, but he's good in that. Yeah, he's not a bad guy. No. Uh, yeah, this movie takes place in the 30s, uh, the time when uh, women in the media were relegated to life, fashion, and gossip puff pieces, but not this woman, Loretta McLaughlin. She yeah. was a fighter. She got her story. She's awesome. Pioneer. Pop two. Pop and two. And uh, two. Bend It Like Beckham is where I fell in love with Kira Knightley, okay. by the way. Yeah. And that yeah, was yeah. 2002. And then... She did Pirates of the Caribbean in 2003, and then she's in King Arthur as a total badass Guinevere in 2004. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, cool. like I said, it, I know I knew it was before okay. Pirates. I was like, no, no. I That was an egregious, egregious miss, of course. <laughs> like, that's a legendary film. I forgot all about it. 
I did, but I just happened to know. I was like, I know she was out before that because, like, I was into her, and then I was like, oh, she, she's gonna be part of the Caribbean. Definitely. Like, I'm not um, really big on celebrity crushes, but she's up there with. I, I would make her a cake, dude. <laughs> so, a pop and two for you, Jordan. Yes. Uh, I put a driven, uh, a driven reporter, and a supportive husband, and then right below that, I put they're getting a divorce. Because I didn't know the true story, but like immediately I was like, it takes place in the 60s, okay? It wasn't far fetched for me to think this immediately. Eventually, this 50s, uh, 50s, 60s man is going to be like, why aren't you making me dinner, Gladys? Like, I knew it was going to happen eventually. And sure enough, we get that scene where he's like, what about the kids? Like, it was going to happen. Uh, I loved the mentor piece, I thought that was amazing. Uh, especially her story coming up, how she never went to university, how she got plucked right out of high school uh, and became an investigative reporter. And she basically really taught herself how to do that. And I think the moral of this story is the police and men suck. Like, that's the moral the of the story. and men <laughs> can I Can I point something out? Because <laughs> you said it takes place in the 60s, which you're you're totally right. And in the mine, I, told, I said it takes place in the 30s. Because when I was writing my notes and I was just, cause I was doing a quick jot of like trying to get some backstory in here. I uh-huh. just wrote that to like fill in my notes. And I was like, I'm going to go back and research that and correct that later. And I totally just forgot. So yeah. <laughs> I think, I think what also this actually brought about copycat killers, them breaking this story. These two women did more than just break this story and find out that there were more than one killer. They, cr- they exposed that copycat killers exist. Because yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah. even thought of before this. Uh, I'm sure it's been thought of, but not to this scale. I, my question was, why now? Why are they making this movie now? And I think that's one of the themes, which is mm-hmm. impressive. It, you know, it applies to today. Yeah, police and men suck. Totally. Right now yeah. is the perfect time to do that. Well, Pop and two for me. Go suck, ahead, Josh. Also, yeah. Well, yeah, but also like the copycat thing. Like we have a school shooting every oh. ten minutes, and yeah, that's not the only thing that's terrible that's happening. Like terrorism's like yeah. rampant and i'm not trying to do a fear-based episode or anything but like you know back then you would just open the door to anyone don't bother the peephole don't bother locking your door uh, and this is like one yeah. of those moments like i'm not saying this event this true event is the thing that caused everything to change but like it's a big milestone in serial killers and a big milestone in uh, journalism and how we how we responsibly Report on things and tell tell the news and all sorts. And of Redfield things. taught us: don't just invite anyone into your home. Yeah, that I was did. the previous butter on top. No, I invite you to go back and watch that episode. <laughs> Nicholas Cage might be out there, and that's yeah, you're not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, you said a pop and two. I, I think I go a yes. pop and two as well. I didn't expect to do pop and two, but like I think you yeah. said, Jordan, previously in another another type of film like this. You go into it thinking, okay, oh, the court one. It's going to be a court show yeah. and blah, blah, blah. But it ends up being a great narrative. And there's the – that's just the centerpiece for what's the underlying thing, which is cops bad, men awful. Um, and that's, you know, <laughs> that's the, the thing they go with. But they do it in a really eloquent way, I think. Like, it's mm-hmm. not just one guy. We've – like, the whole show ends up being it's not one guy who's going around strangling. It's – However yes. many we don't know, and then open it up to people that aren't the Boston string, with it just men that just take care of business in an evil way to get their own way, yeah. and then and disguise it know. as this person and get away yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it yeah. was probably just some asshole, or you know, the guy. Go ahead, the guy. There's that uh, really you know terrible line at the end where he's like, "Men kill men kill women," and yeah. it's not gonna. It didn't start before him. Or, you know, it didn't yeah. start with him, and it's not going to end after him. Mm-hmm. And it's like, damn, that is terrible. <laughs> yeah. Terrible. Yeah. Um, but it reminded me also on the lighter side of it, this is, this also plays into the same theme, just on a different side of the pendulum, perhaps. Her husband was a good husband. They had a good thing going on. And he said, you know, I, I would never ask you to stay home. you got to work, baby girl. You're the, you're the boss bitch or whatever. But as soon as it didn't work out for him what's wrong with you you know and that's a very common thing among nice guys you know what i mean or whatever yeah oh i'm a very accommodating husband but that's that's enough pull the leash back you know what i mean 
Yeah. yeah. Um, that guy's a really good actor. Um, he's in a show yeah. that I highly recommend if you haven't seen it called The Plot Against America. Um, oh, yeah. It's a mini series. I, I did watch it. Yeah, with uh, his brother that loses his leg, right? Yeah, uh, it's about it takes that guy. place during World War II era. Well, it's, an, it's an alternate history for yeah. what if that guy, what's his name? The guy that was like a hidden, uh, he's like a national hero, but he's like a closet Nazi or maybe not. I don't know. But uh, it's like he, Lindbergh, Charles Lindbergh. No, oh, Lindbergh. Okay. And uh, oh, what pilot. if, yeah, what if he uh, ran for president on this like Nazi fascist platform and won and then started yeah. enacting basically what Hitler was doing? Oh, America. I remember that. That's yeah, the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. So watch that show if you haven't. It's a great yeah. show. Yeah. He's a good yeah. actor, is my point. No, I got you. Um, I think yeah. Kara Knightley did a good job playing her character. And I love that. It, I mean, we maybe harp too much on love stories and like whether or not necessary and whether they are necessary. This is a love story between two best friends and a woman who loves her job. Um, mm -hmm. The job is one thing, but also the, this is a love story about two best friends. And they we find out the end. They've been best friends ever since. And um, yeah. they didn't need to harp on it too much it was just a relationship that built organically throughout the plot and i thought you weren't talking to me i'm not but help me out okay fine you know like that's <laughs> that's a real authentic of it of relationship that built in an hour and a half or however long it was it didn't take long but it was so believable so quickly and that's a beautiful beautiful a testament to writing pay the writers uh i give this movie a popcorn and two I liked it. Oh, and like you said, not too harsh. Not too like we didn't focus on the killer and what the killer's doing. It wasn't like murder porn. It was yeah. the the character wasn't the murderer. And we don't know who the murderer mm -hmm. was. I think this was a fault of the Zodiac movie. It was men. Yeah. Yeah. It was men. Yeah. The killer was the, men. The Zodiac, movie, <laughs> the Zodiac movie took a long time focusing on the killer and then the scenes where he kills. Like, this is not important. Like, let's focus yeah. on the, what happened, the reaction, the paper. I loved it. The passive information, lock your doors at night now. Like, very, yeah. very modern yeah. parallels. And I loved the way they did it. I wasn't expecting to. Good stuff. Pop and two. And what we weren't expecting is for The Rock to turn down Vin Diesel for Fast X. But he did. Nevertheless, we will be watching Fast X for our butter on top this week. And Jordan... You've got the reins on our drunk classic, so what's it going to be? Tell me what you want, what you really, really want. Man, so I was set on one thing yesterday, but then I woke up this morning and something hit me like a ton of bricks, all right? Um, was it fast... brick? No. <laughs> that would have been good. That would have been a good lead-in. <laughs> um, so we're going Fast X, race cars, all that. So I'm going comedy. I'm staying with comedy. We're going to go Dude, Where's My Car? Oh. It's been so long since I've... We were just talking about that the other day, me and somebody, so it's so funny that you said that. Uh, I've never seen it. Confession. Ridiculous movie. Absolutely, probably, a, it's a just an objectively a bad movie, but just hilarious, yes. good, old-timey comedy vibes. Oh, it was me, Josh, and Brooke. Josh, Brooke, and I, on, like, before we filmed Gorp, we were, our episode of Gorp, Brooke and I were riffing on Dude, Where's My Car? And I was yeah. like, I think they invented the saying, I heart you. And That's she's right. like, really? I was like, yeah, because yeah. I never heard I heart you before, dude. Where's Mike? Yeah. yeah. Instead of I love you, it was like, I heart you. Yeah. <laughs> it could be. Um, yeah, I can't wait to see it. I've always wanted to. Everyone talked about it in high school, Zoltan, or whatever that is. Yeah. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> yeah. So great. Good choice. The bubble wrap. Yeah. Or interstellar <laughs> jumpsuits. Save it. Save it. It's a gold mine. <laughs> What's he doing? Rocking right. the white lightning, son. All right. Well, audience, we thank you, Jordan. Where can they reach out and give Josh some anime suggestions? At pop Twitter, at Popcorn and Beers. Popcorn and Beer. Yeah. All right. And you can reach us on YouTube at the Sad Fan Podcast Network. There is a website in the works. We will have a TikTok up soon. And I know Josh is hard at work getting you guys on Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, and everything else. As always, Thank you so much for joining us this week, and we will see you at the movies. Bring your popcorn and beer.